Hello again, folks. Well, today we are on location at the Kamloops Makerspace for a very special project and a strange little experiment that I want to undergo. And the reason for that experiment is this thing right here. Now, what this is, is a computerized engine control or electronic fuel feedback system. Now, what the heck is that? This is a device here that's manufactured by Ford, not for Ford products, but for vehicles that are from American Motors and notably Jeep. So if you had a computer-controlled Jeep or AMC back in the day, you probably had something similar to this running underneath the hood. Now, it's not like a modern engine computer in that if this little box here dies, the vehicle itself doesn't work at all. Well, in reality, the vehicle is going to run like absolute crap because this thing is doing a little bit more underneath the hood than you might expect out of a regular vehicle. And back then, of course, everything was carbureted. What this is doing here is that at the very base of it, once the vehicle warms up, it looks at the O2 sensor to check the oxygen content of your exhaust gases. Modern cars still do this. But it determines from that there whether or not your carburetor is running a little bit too lean or a little bit too rich. And as a result, it feedbacks to the vehicle's carburetor, usually made by Carter, to pull a set of pins in or out of the carburetor itself to control the lean or rich mixture of the air fuel ratio going into the engine. Most people don't like this here because it does, the emissions control does interfere with performance of the vehicle. But I do find as well is that you're adding fuel control to a carbureted vehicle. Most carburetors aren't really all that great with fuel economy. So this is already doing something fancy. Unfortunately, they're not really serviceable devices because as you might be able to see from this here, this is potted in a silica epoxy resin. It's very hard, it makes it water resistant, it makes it pretty heat resistant, makes it vibration resistant, but it encapsulates the entire circuit board. So usually when these computers go bad, there's nothing you can really do but replace them. And that's not really an option anymore when a lot of these computers now are coming up on 40 years of age. So the solution is simple. What if we replace it? In late 80s and early 90s and even newer vehicles, we have the Carduino. And that is quite simply an Arduino shield that lets you replace your vehicle's, your vehicle's car computer with an Arduino. It's even simpler for this here because the fuel feedback system, it's, it's, there's, there's only one analog sensor, which is the O2 sensor. Coolant temperature, digital, on or off. Um, camshaft, camshaft position, easy, on or off. It's that simple. So I think we could probably reverse engineer this into something much simpler that's just a drop-in replacement without having to go through a convoluted process of making the much more advanced Carduino do the purpose of this. But to do that, we have to get into this resin. Thankfully, this unit here has been donated to me by a member of the AMC forums. So I get to dissect this one here and not think about, oh, I can't drive my vehicle home at the end of the day. And this one here is even more special because some epoxy resins don't ever set or cure properly. Or sometimes they will cure properly, but something chemically about them breaks down. And while these are usually a really tough glass, this one here, if I take a sharp bladed screwdriver, and just dig, it sticks. Well, of course, to a degree. But we're gonna try one process here that's not chemical, so we don't destroy this plastic connector here, to see if we can unearth the circuit board and the microcontroller that's hiding underneath. I really wanna know exactly how this two-phase stepper motor circuit and what kind of input and output buffers this thing uses. Come on, let's go down into our workshop. All right. Here we are in the fantastic Makerspace kitchen. The real reason I want to do it here is because we're going to be boiling this module here. Some epoxies will soften up when they get to a certain temperature, at which point it'd get a lot easier to start removing the, the resin itself to get to the electronics underneath. There's another good video regarding how to do this on YouTube. Uh, check down in the description for a link to that one there. But the other reason I need specifically here at the Makerspace is that we do have a fan and a fume hood directly above it just to capture all of that steam. Oh, by the way, when you do something like this, I recommend you have disposable cookware that you're using. This stock pot here only cost me $4 at the local secondhand store. So something goes wrong when I'm working on this, it's okay if that gets ruined. Anyways, we're gonna add water to this. 
I'm going to put the computer in here. We're going to bring it up to a boil. I'm going to leave it there for a bit so everything inside of this warms up and gets hot uniformly. Then I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to see if we can try and chip a little bit away with a screwdriver and to see in this case if using the hot water technique is going to help us get this resin off. Now, someone's going to bring up the question of, is it really bad to be putting high temperature and water near these electronics? The reality is, a lot of semiconductors, when they're non-operating, have an amazing tolerance for both moisture and temperature. And in this case here, again, this is a sacrificial computer. It's okay if at the end of the day, this computer doesn't work because we don't even know if this computer works in the first place. We're just after the understanding of what's going on inside of it. But this here is going to take a little while to do, so we're going to fast forward on that one there, and we'll get back to you once it's ready. Oh yeah, the fan. You should have heard them after the dreaded boiled cabbage incident. now this thing's been boiling away behind me now for a little over half an hour so we should be ready about now so I've gotten this table here set up for it I'm gonna bring the pot over here put some gloves on we're gonna pull the computer right on out all right and because it's gonna burn the crap out of my hands let's put some gloves on And here we go. Whew. Yeah, that's hot computer for you. Now, let's see. Yeah, it, oh, okay, cool. My glove oh, just fell apart. But, Look at that. Comes off like a jelly. You can just peel it right off. Yes. And I can already see ICs. Aha. Uh -huh. I already see an Intel ADA 49H. Oh, yes. This came off really well. very quickly here because it wants to solidify again. And I see a crystal. A crystal. That just comes right off. I don't want to get too much. Oh god, it's sticky to me. There we go. By order of magnitude, it's all about the chemistry. The silica helps slow down me trying to stab this thing and damage components, which is great. And because the connector is made of a different type of plastic that has a much higher melting temperature, it's not even soft. So I can just pry this stuff off. Look at that. You see that? Look, look, I can already see the circuit board in spots here. Excellent. This is exactly what I was after. And it's just coming off in giant chunks. I notice while it cools down here, it's getting harder to work with, so we're going to have to boil it again. But, yeah, 
I'm considering that a success. At the very least, I now know exactly what CPU this thing's using. Nice. Okay, that turned out even better than I expected. So I can actually just chisel away this a little bit more, clean it up, and I'll be able to probably remove this board with a little bit more work. But as long as my finger here is sticking out through my glove, it's a bit more difficult to work with. So I gotta go buy myself another pair of gloves. I'm gonna keep working on this, but you can keep in your mind right now that when it comes to depotting these using boiling water, sure, it does work. Um, you will have to do a little bit of extra work and you will have to reboil to get the parts out, but as you can see right there, it's working absolutely beautifully. But that's all for now. I'm gonna work on this, but until next time, have a good one. And just a couple hours later, here we are. We've completely depotted the board out of the enclosure. It now comes completely out of there, and even better yet, I've managed to already desolder this connector here and remove that off as well to have better fine clean this. And it's a lot simpler in here than I thought it was going to be. We have the microcontroller up top here, which off the top of my head I've forgotten. It is, yes, the Intel 8049, not the 8048. So we do have onboard uh, mask ROM inside of it. We have what look to be two drivers that are sitting right here, and I'm trying to figure out exactly what they're doing. And down here I have another Signetics chip, which I'm not sure what it's doing yet either. But other than that, there's no buffers on this thing, and there's no other drivers. So it's just diodes, resistors, and a couple of transistor, and yeah, transistors, and yeah, a couple other chips on here. But that came out very well. So in my case here, yes, boiling these boards is probably the first thing you should try and do to see if you can release them out of their potting. Now, it may vary on other types of epoxy chemistry, but can I really say no on this case here? Sure can't. Anyways, have a good one. <laughs>